Hello, welcome back to Switched On. Paul here, and we're showcasing Nintendo Switch version of Grid Autosport, which comes out this Thursday, the 19th. And if you haven't seen, we're having daily videos about the game. And today, a little bit of a special game for you. I want to go into extra championships. And in here, we have some preset championships, and one in particular, I think it's going to be a, a really nice video to make for you guys today. But we'll just have a quick flick through these. So you've got some drag championships, lots of different drag versions. Um, some touring car videos. Some single seater, hot hatch videos. These are all sort of themed. So there's like shoreline races here in different cars. Sprint races and then sort of culminating in what appears to be like a, well it's not Formula 1 is it, it's IndyCar. But you've got four track. Uh, race there, but the one I want to play through today, a few people have asked for this, and it's a uh, as the game is kind of a spiritual successor to Codemasters Toka touring car games. We're going to have a look at the British touring car event. This is played over the three British tracks Brands Hatch, Silverstone, and Donington. So, the choice of cars we've got the uh, Sierra Cosworth. BMW E30. Let's wait for that to load in. Oh, the Audi A4 Quattro. Classic touring car. Very nice. Uh, Volvo 850 Estate. <laughs> it's like the uh, car from Ghostbusters. And then an uh, Alfa Romeo 155. Very nice indeed, but I think we will go with the Sierra. Reminds me of growing up in the 1980s in the UK. Pretty much everyone's dad owned a Ford Sierra. So here we are, first race is at Donington. And there's gonna be two races here. You can have a qualifying session, you can do practice. Um, there's quite a lot of tuning available for these cars as well. So this has got higher ability to tune, which means there's a lot more notches um, on the tuning sections to, to go through. So if you like tuning your cars, uh, I'm not one for tuning to be honest, but you've got lots of options here to be able to tune. Each car's got a different range of abilities. Some you can't tune, some have just got a couple of notches, but these ones are highly customizable. You can upgrade vehicle, uh, brakes, engine, flywheel. And then there's rules, difficulties, options, all that kind of thing. So what we'll do is we'll forgo qualifying We'll dive straight into a race and see how we get on. So starting at the back of the grid, switch into our preferred cockpit mode. And we're in graphics mode here, so 30 frames a second. A bit of a nudge there on the Volvo. What we'll do is we'll switch out to a, a third, third party chase cam view in a sec. Uh, just it's more reminiscent of those Toka touring car games. The Sierra handling very nicely at the moment. But a few comments bemoaning my uh, lack of ability. Um, just again to remind people, I find it really hard to drive and narrate at the same time. I've got some videos that are hopefully coming out uh, probably tomorrow where it's just me playing without narration. And that you should see a slightly higher level. I'm not saying I'm great, but a slightly higher level of driving in those. So I'm not really making up much ground here. We're still 11th. Stuck out to this exterior view. Three lap race this one as we go into the chicane. Hard on the brakes. Don't take your eyes off the track is my tip. Especially when you come out to a chicane. So we're going door to door with the Volvo there. And that's one lap down, we're up into 10th. To this tight right hand up. Get a bit sideways through there. A couple of things you may not have noticed as well in the uh, speedometer. In the right hand corner, you've got like a, an odometer, like a mileage counter. That's persistent. So anytime you use this car in the game, anywhere, the mileage will stay. Oh, massive, massive accident. Uh, so yeah, that mileage will be persistent. So 
it just keeps counting. Anytime you use this car, the mileage will always be counting up. So it's quite a good indicator to show how, you know, how far you've gone in a car. There is actually a dedicated statistics page as well that shows you all sorts of stuff, so maybe we'll have a look at that in another video. Up into ninth and can't seem to be making up much ground here. This is why qualifying is so important. We could have qualified much higher through this chicane, much better this time, because we're actually watching the road. Gained a little bit of ground there, if we can get in the slipstream. Come out of the slipstream nicely. That's a great overtake. Hard on the brakes. A little bit of argy bargy going on up ahead should allow us to catch up a little bit. So we're hoping these cars are going to hold each other up. So risky move up the inside, had to back off there because we could have been clipped. As we see a plane taking off in the distance. Hard on the brakes and up on the inside, that's another place gained. Up into eighth. Into the chicane. Oh no, it's not the chicane, sorry, a bit early for that. Chicane's kind of off the straight, isn't it? If we can get in the slipstream, maybe we can get in on the brakes. Well, the BMW moved across a little bit there to cover his line. Don't think we're going to make that place up now. It's going to be close. No. So, finished in eighth. Not bad. Made up a, a few places. And a pretty decent first race. So we didn't take part in the second race at Donington, so we've moved on to Brands Hatch, and this is the Indy course, the smaller course. Again, qualifying and practice available. We'll go straight into the race. Four lap race on a much shorter track. Start again inside the vehicle. What I may do on this one, because it is such a short race, is um, I might do the second event, so the second race in this event in 60 frames a second, just so you can see the difference. Sierra there. Down in 12th. The inside of the other Sierra. It's a lap down. So, getting off the accelerator for that tight right hander. We've got the really tight hairpin up here. say this Sierra handles really well. I know I've got some um, traction control and ABS on. It feels great to drive. It feels a really nice stable car. Quick on acceleration, responsive around the corners. And we go around the outside of the BMW. Make that move stick. Get in the slipstream. Duck up the side of one Volvo. Oh, contact made. Allows him to come back up at us. So we go around the outside again. Seem to have a bit of joy around the outside of the hairpin. Oh, it's a long way round and we don't quite make it stick. But we make it stick up the inside of that one. Up into ninth. Remember we finished eighth in that first race at Donington. Bit of dust kicked up in, up ahead as the car goes off the track. See if we can get an external view on this straight. Just for the final lap. If 
See if we can get a good run off of this corner, which we do. Bit out of position to make a move there, though. We kind of got ourselves stuck on the side of the track. Penalty there for going over the white lines. Just slows you down for a couple of seconds. And that's allowed the car behind to come back at us. Get a better finish here. Oh, it's tight. And we need a good run off this corner if we can. Looks good. Oh, no. Good blocking from the Volvo. Yeah, I think we missed our chance there. Bit of a shame. Finished ninth in that one. Made up a few places again. Right, we'll do this second race like I promised. And we're in uh, performance mode now. So you can... Hopefully see an immediate difference as we're in 60 frames second mode as we go off. That's not ideal. Massive contact. Some damage to the back there. Bit of a job now to catch up. But I hope you can see sort of that immediate difference. The graphics look very different. As I've said before, it looks kind of um, cartoony when you're in this performance mode colours look a lot more um, vibrant but probably not in a good way as we go across the track there and incur a penalty oh, it throws your rhythm off because it slows you down and you can't do anything about it try and do two laps in the exterior view and then two laps in the interior view going to catch this pack reasonably easy I would have thought as they're all fighting each other so we're already close up on them by the hairpin and they're all having a little bit of argy bargy it allows us to go around the outside make up one place you can see there a little bit of frame dip. It's quite noticeable in 60 frames a second, even though it is classified up to 60 frames a second. I think there's been some tests done, and it doesn't always hit 60. It sort of hovers sort of around low to mid 50s. But when it does drop, you can uh, you can feel it in this mode. Where in, in the graphics mode, 30 frames a second, pretty much rock solid 30 at all times. So you don't really get that noticeable drop. The boot there on the Alfa Romeo flapping open. Obviously had some contact from behind. Just make up a few places there. Chase down the Audi. Got another Sierra on inside. That's what this touring car racing is all about. Bumper to bumper action. Ooh, we can duck up the inside of a few there as well. Bit of argy bargy up into six now. Final lap. Gonna be a job to catch this little mini pack ahead, but we'll give it a go. That's a good exit from the corner. We could get at least one here on the hairpin. Breaking hard to avoid the BMW in front. Tell you what. Tell you what, we're on for a decent finish here. Takes third. We're quick through this section. And that's second, and all of a sudden, we're eyeing up first place. Don't think we're going to get it over too far away to make a challenge, but great effort. To come back from... We started fourth, got hit, and uh, put, practically started the first lap last. And fight our way back up to second. Great performance. So, move on to Silverstone. And again, we go straight into the race. This is on the national circuit, so again, shorter track. That's a decent start. Yeah. 
Woof. Got taken out by that Sierra coming flying, flying across the track. Oh, that's a mistake. Wasn't expecting that corner <laughs> on the shorter version of Silverstone. Okay, I've just flicked into graphics mode. So hopefully get a nice look at this. We've been playing in uh, performance mode so far. So we're back down to 30 frames a second, but hopefully nicer graphics. What's that hopefully? It's clearly nicer graphics. Just looks more real and more, um, yeah, it's more realistic. But anyway, where are we? Sixth first lap coming up to be in the books. There we go. It's 90 degree right hander. It's great just little background details as well. Just saw like a flock of birds take off then and I was actually doing a night endurance race the other day. Got in far too hot into that corner again. Um, and saw a, there was a helicopter, you could hear it and then also see it in the sky and it had like a searchlight on it as well or the, the helicopter lights, which was really cool. Some nice damage there. If you look to the right, see the uh, Sierra pulling alongside us. Got all damage down the side. Sharp second gear, left hand into the right hander. And make up some good ground on that Sierra in front. If we get a good exit out of here, it's too bad, but it doesn't look like we've really closed the gap at all. Tuck in on the home straight, I think we're too far away to benefit from slipstream. Seems to be quicker under braking, but then haven't got the power to to catch up. Kind of relying on a mistake from the cars in front. Dust being kicked up in front of us. Just kind of see this sharp left hander we've got wide, but it may just play into a favour if we can get the cut back. Pulling up alongside the Sierra. Just got to get the power down. We've got the inside line. Oh, that's pretty aggressive there. From who's that in front of us? Sophie Muller. But we are close up, we should. Whoa, hold on the brakes. We should be in a good position to take that fifth place on this lap. Although we are being caught behind. Aaron O'Sullivan. Again, deep into that corner, but we hold on. Oh, this is going to be a close finish. As Muller again pulls away. Now the only advantage we could have here is she's in a battle with that Volvo. And the Volvo, while well, they're busy dealing with Muller, might allow us in, but we're also losing focus because we're being caught behind. It's going to be a close finish. We can hold on to this position. We can't. The Sierra Nixon of Erin O'Sullivan. It's going to be a sprint to the line. I don't think we're going to make it. Close race, and we kind of threw away sixth place there. So, in the next event, we're back to Donington Park, and uh, I realized in the last race that we didn't do an external view, so maybe we'll do this whole race in an external view in quality mode. And this looks like the full Donington track this time. It's a good start, the Volvo in front. Uh, Vascal Berg is slow off the line. Actually, it's Martin Souza. Vascal Berg is a couple of cars up in front. Already losing power. And I guess this is where you'd need to be uh, on the tuning and the setup of the vehicle. I haven't fiddled with that really. So we're kind of losing power. You know, we're not probably optimised off the line gear ratios. 
Uh, downforce probably not optimised here. So we'll do our best. Just looks so good, doesn't it? Wow. There's a helicopter above. You can hear it. I don't know if it's coming through on YouTube, but you can hear it whirring away. Now, one of the things that I do really like about the graphics as well, compared to some modern racing games as well, is the screen shake. You can turn it down if you're not a fan of it. And I know it can make some people a little bit sick, but um, it really conveys that feeling of racing, especially when you're in the interior view. It's something that I found modern F1 games, as good as they are, and I really like the modern F1 games on consoles, but when you watch sort of a, a cockpit replay in real Formula 1, you know, the camera's bouncing around a lot, far more than uh, the game conveys, so it's great to have that here. Nice overtake there around the outside of Gabriel Moro. I'm going to take another Sierra on the outside, although it causes us to shunt into the Volvo the Vasco Berg in front of us. Decent first lap, go from last place and pick up a few places. Some people have asked about the steering again. It is very uh, analogue, it's just quite sensitive. I think you can turn the sensitivity settings down, um, but it's definitely analogue, so don't worry, it's not sort of digital like Gear Club is. It's very, uh, very analogue. It's probably just my rubbish gameplay, not. Um, conveying how smooth it can be. And much luckier catching the pack. Switch to some interior footage. It's a nice sort of a uh, few bits on the window screen as well, a few like bugs and specks of dirt and grease, that's good. Oh, we kind of lost going, lost it under braking now. It's cost us a, a second or two. In the next race, I might turn off some of the assists so you can see for the final race, I think it's the final race. Um, how the assists help and see if we can be a little bit quicker. So let's do it for the next race here, because if you change the difficulty, you, you have to restart the race. We don't want to do that on the last lap of this one. As we dive up the inside of a couple, up into fifth. Oh, we get clipped from behind. Well, that's not ideal. going to use a rewind here. You get five rewinds per race. You can change that to get a better um, XP bonus. Let's just see if we can avoid getting shunted. Oh, we're getting a little nudge, but we hold on this time and maintain our fifth position. Closing down a 90 degree corner. Take that quite nicely, lift off a little bit. Into the S curve section, we've got a spinner and a car's flipped. Whoa! And that's allowed everybody through on the inside when they went the left, uh, the right hand side of that car. We had to slow down and go the left side, and it allowed for a few passes there. That's a little bit unfortunate. I don't know what the racing stewards will make of that, whether we'd have to have the, those places back, but that's not going to happen. And that's racing. But again, great. AI makes a mistake and actually flips the car on the track. Probably would have been red flagged, obviously, in a real, real life race, but just the way the AI reacts in this game, very realistic, very natural, and uh, you just don't know what's coming. That's the awesome thing. As we take a real Shot around the outside of uh, the Volvo of Martin Souza. And again, we'll go around the outside. Do make up that couple of places. Back up into six. And that's where we're going to finish. Decent race. Quite a lot of action. Enjoyed that.
So, we arrive at the final race. See if we can change the difficulty before we start. We're at the full Brands Hatch track. It's a track I know quite well, so I'm quite comfortable turning off traction control on ABS. Just to give you an idea of um, how... Oh, just how the uh, game handles when I've got no assists on. Let's, uh, let's see, shall we? Let's get into the race. So, this is now Simulation Pro Handley model. No traction control, no ABS braking. So, you can see straight off the line, wheel spinning, no traction control kicking in. But it does get us away a little bit quicker. Into this left hander, we have to be very careful on the acceleration and brakes. Already some contact in the field ahead. We're getting a bit of contact from behind into the hairpin. It's a lot of debris on the track. Feel a little bit of oversteer. But it's fine. It doesn't feel too bad actually. I mean these cars are obviously a lot easier to handle than some of the higher powered single seaters. But you can see clearly from the right hand side there that we've got none of the uh, yellow lights lighting up to indicate that the assists are kicking in. So you know I am actually playing without any assists. Sneak a couple of places there up into ninth. Someone locks up their brakes in front, big puff of smoke. All out of position for this right hander all over the shop. Somehow get away with it, just not taking the right lines. Pulled it together a bit now, but we're all over the shop then, so we're being chased by the Volvo. We're going to switch on the uh, on the home straight. I'll switch to the exterior view. So we can do half the race with the interior cam, half with the exterior. As we make up some good ground on the exit out the corner now. Make up a place. So on the brakes, into the right hander. Take a position on Hannah Wolf. Oh, a bit squiggly out of that corner without traction control. Gently on the brakes. This is, I mean, these cars are so nice to drive. I really recommend when you get the game, head into the British Touring Car section and have a go with these, they're really fun to drive. Picking up some toe now, we're gonna get them on the... Oh no, if they back out of that move. Still get a clip on the front quarter for our troubles. Would have been a brave move to dive down the inside then, probably would have caused all sorts of trouble. See if we can get a good exit on the final corner. All on the grass, but we go a bit sideways, it's fine. Touch left hand up again. Drifting a little bit, but everybody's struggling with that corner. Just ease off and then back on the power. Again, sideways a little bit. Make contact with a BMW. On the outside here, we're probably not going to be able to make a move. We have to be very careful, duck to the inside. No ground. Could have been a bit braver into that hairpin, could have taken that place. Just very conscious of uh, getting clipped when there's no traction control because we would be in trouble, so reverting to a little bit more defensive and sensible racing. But still keeping the BMW of Emil Bjorklund in sight. We're probably going to get him here if we can. Again, are we too far away to stick our nose in? Good defending from Bjorklund, just drifted across a little bit to the right-hand side and really give us a few options. Looked like there was an off there, looks like someone went through the corner markers. Oh, and Bjorklund gets sideways in front of us. Nearly losing it. Great save from the AI. And they 
again you can see Bjorklund getting sideways we're being looked at ourselves we have to go defensive from the inside of oh, that corner kick the curb oh we took that corner all wrong oh dear we were sideways going into the corner then click the curb and that was us done for us so you see then the uh, the lack of traction control as well it was a bit overzealous on the accelerator and just lost it spinning round so there you go, an exciting race again. You can see the, uh, the the races are really fun, great to drive, difficult as well, which is what you want. Coming in, in a sad last after that spin, but had some good close racing there. So that's the series done. That is the British Touring Car Championship. Five races. Each of the actual locations has two races in it. Plus you can do practice and qualifying as well. So a total of ten races plus practice and qualifying we've kind of blitzed through them here but you know you've got a good few hours of content just here in the British Touring Car Championships standalone championship tax speed my team finished bottom not surprising we won't go into race two and then what we'll do is have another quick look at the championships that I showed you earlier so the drag championships just to remind you British Touring Cars, European Championship Touring Cars. So let's have a look. It's got uh, Circuit de Jama in Spain, Hockenheim in Germany, Algarve in Portugal, and Donington Park in England. So four, uh, four events there, although it says five. So one of those events will be repeated. Uh, international Championship, so Touring Cars on international tracks. It's got Panorama Circuit in Mount Trabant. Uh, Autosport Raceway in America, Istanbul Park, Silverstone. Then this Sprint Challenge. And then Hot Hatches. Looks like Performance or Tuning Cars. Yeah, the Tuning Cars, some Street Cars, back to Single Seaters, Street Tuner. And then this World Championship Sprint Race. So those are the predefined championships. There's absolutely loads of them, as you can see, to work through brilliant stuff so i hope you enjoyed that video really was looking forward to doing this british touring car championship i know a lot of fans of uh, the toka games and the british touring car games uh, are out there from codemasters from the old playstation system so hopefully that's giving you a little bit of uh, memories to reminisce over and uh, something to look forward to when grid hits on thursday the 19th thanks for watching guys please subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video and i'll look forward to seeing you next time thanks everyone bye bye